MyBookie.ag presents The Hurry Up. Welcome on into The Hurry Up presented by MyBookie.ag. Courtney Cox here and enough with preseason. The time is now. Week one is upon us. Patriots and Chiefs kick off the 2017 season on Thursday night at Gillette Stadium. So it's going to be a good one. And we're going to go right into this. Enough preseason, enough predictions. We're talking real NFL storylines, and we're joined now by Nick Goss. So, Nick, let's kick it off week one. Yeah, week one, there are some really fantastic matchups. A pair of NFC favorites going out of the Green Bay Packers and Seattle Seahawks. Uh, for the Seahawks, they have to protect Russell Wilson. Tied for the most sacks of any quarterback last season. I think he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but it's tough if you're running for your life all the time. Uh, their defense is going to be great again. They're a veteran group. Uh, they have tons of experience. Adding Sheldon Richardson from the Jets is a huge upgrade to the defensive line, and they're going to need all the defensive prowess they can get against Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers quarterback, one of the best in the league. Um, we know he's going to keep the Packers in most games. Their defense has to be much better. The last time we saw them, they were getting destroyed by the Atlanta Falcons in the NFC Championship game. Uh, this game is in Lambeau, so the Seattle is going to have to travel, but I think the Seahawks pull this one out. Well, you say two NFC favorites, and mybookie.ag actually has them as their two favorites to win the NFC at plus 380 each. So interesting there. But moving on, you also have another game that everybody's got to keep their eyes out. Yeah, really a, a matchup of potential division winners, the Oakland Raiders traveling east uh, to take on the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are uh, a minus two on the spread, according to mybookie.ag. Uh, the Raiders have to be better defensively. They had the second most turnovers last year, but that's hard to rely on. They gave up a ton of points. Uh, Mariota only nine interceptions last year, the Titans quarterback. Uh, a lot of people are thinking he's going to take a leap forward, but the key for the Titans is their running game. The two-headed monster in the backfield, DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry, if they can control the ball, control the clock, and not turn the ball over, i like them to cover at home and get a huge start to their season. Great stuff from Nick, as always. If you want to follow along with him on Twitter, it's at Nick Goss Nesson. But now let's set it to our friends at Gillette Stadium we've got Doug, Dad, Kai, the new dad, and Zach Cox. Thanks, guys. Patriots and Chiefs will be playing right behind us here on Thursday night at 8.30. This is one of the more compelling matchups that the Patriots will face this season. Who's one player on the Chiefs that you kind of expect could give the Patriots some trouble in this game? Well, I think it has to be the, the one guy that they're really game planning for is Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's probably uh, one of the top five most dynamic players in, in all of the National Football League between what he can do with the ball in his hands as a receiver, as a running back, as a kick returner, as a punt returner. Sounds like we're going to see him mostly as a, a wide receiver slash punt returner this year, but even in that kind of limited role, he's a guy that can really make game-changing plays, even against a defense that's as talented as the Patriots. They've been, the Andy Reid and the Chiefs have been game planning for this basically since since last February. So I definitely think they're going to find ways to get to get Hill involved in the game in maybe ways that the Patriots aren't uh, anticipating. One weakness on the Chiefs is at their cornerback position beyond Marcus Peters. I, I think that any wide receiver who's going up against Marcus Peters might not have the greatest game, but as when you get down to the slot cornerback, the second cornerback, that's where the Patriots could start to give the Chiefs some trouble. So I think that one player specifically on the Patriots who could give Kansas City a hard time is Chris Hogan. I expect really big things from Hogan this season. Now that he's probably taking over that slot wide receiver role from Julian Edelman. Hogan is a little bit bigger than the Patriots' typical slot wide receivers, but he has had some experience in that role in the past. Him and Brady seem to have, have a really great connection during the preseason. So I'm expecting really big things from Hogan. I think that he will start out the season very hot here against the Chiefs. Patriots are our favorite eight and a half in this game on mybookie.ag. Uh, uh, what are you taking here? I'm taking the Patriots. <laughs> I think uh, traditionally these these season opening games tend to be pretty close, and I know that the Chiefs were the second te second seed in the AFC East last year, returned almost all their players, but the Patriots look like a wagon right now, even without Julian Edelman. I think they win this game big. Yeah, I'm also laying the points. I expect probably a double-digit point victory here for the Patriots. Welcome back into the Nesson Digital Studio. Hope you enjoyed your time at Gillette Stadium. Now we've got Mike Cole in studio, and we're going to talk about some locks and upsets. Uh -huh. Week one is upon us. The week is here. Uh, so we want to see, you know, what to do, right? Everybody wants to know who they should be betting on. And uh, Mike's going to give us a little bit of an insight. So let's start with a lock. Okay. Who are the people at home, who do they want to lock in? Full disclosure, week one, almost impossible to pick. So I want to get that out of the way. But uh, I like... The Houston Texans, my bookie has them as five and a half point favorites against Jacksonville. I kind of actually expect that number to rise. Uh, I just think you look at these two teams, the way they match up, that Houston defense is so good. So many questions uh, about that Jaguars offense. J.J. Watt is back for Houston. Uh, they've won the last four games against Jacksonville. They've covered in three of those four games. 
First game back in Houston after the hurricane, you've got to imagine that place is going to be rowdy. So I'm going to you know, pretty much make a habit of picking against the Jaguars this year, starting week one with the Texans. Houston obviously uh, dealing with the right. effects of the hurricane. Jacksonville now nervous about a hurricane for themselves. So an interesting matchup, mm -hmm. uh, definitely one that everybody will be watching and rooting for their fans. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we talk about upset, I think you're also agreeing with my bookie here as well. Yeah, I got uh, the uh, Los Angeles Chargers again. Oh, that's going to take me a while. Phew, I'm so glad still that that um... want to call them the Clippers or the San Diego Chargers, <laughs> but uh, I, I like the Chargers as my bookie has them as three and a half point underdogs. Monday night, the last game of Week One, the late night game. Uh, you look at that Denver rush defense. They did some things over the the course of the off season to kind of improve that, but they still gave up four and a half yards thereabouts yards per rush last year, over a hundred yards per game. Uh, these two teams split last year. San Diego rushed the ball for an average of about 111 yards per game, the two games against Denver. Um, and they've got Melvin Gordon, I think, is one of the better running backs in football. He's going to have a real nice season, I imagine. Uh, you know, Phillip Rivers still can get it done as long as he limits the turnovers. Easier said than done against Denver. But that three and a half points, that's, uh, that's tempting. Uh, and I like them to win that game outright, so I like the, the Chargers in that one. All right. Well, great stuff from Mike. As always, you want to make sure to follow along with him on Twitter at Mike Cole Nesson. Welcome back into the Nesson Digital Studio here with Darren Hartwell now. And Darren, I read uh, your piece about fantasy uh, waiver wire, and it was a little depressing, I oh. have to say. The start of it, it just said, you know, everybody set up their uh, their drafts, they, everybody's gone through their fantasy drafts, and this one in particular, pe people are sad about. If well, you know, if you're disappointed about your draft, uh, you know, you can look in the waiver wire for help. Yes. That's all I was saying. All you right, know. all right. So okay. some I feel better there. about it now. Yeah. I feel better. Yeah. Um, but we're going to break down three positions. We're going to do running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. So let's start with running backs. Mm -hmm. uh, the running back I like uh, is Jamal Charles. Obviously, a pretty big name, uh, but he's not owned in many leagues because he was, he was kind of a question mark for the 53-man roster, but he's on the Broncos roster now. Obviously, he's going to be behind uh, C.J. Anderson uh, in Denver there. But I think, you know, he has, he has a chance to get some touches, just the fact that he made this roster. And uh, it's a pretty good matchup in week one, Monday night against the Chargers, who, who struggled against the run last season. Uh, so I think he could get some touches and potentially, uh, you know, be kind of a low-end RB, too. All right, so from there, let's go to wide receivers. Yeah, I'm actually uh, staying local with this one, Philip Dorsett. Obviously, a lot of hype around him. Uh, I mean, if you go from uh, Scott Tolzien to Tom mm -hmm. Brady as your starting quarterback, uh, going from the Colts to the Patriots, definitely boosts your draft stock uh, or your fantasy stock. Obviously, uh, it's unclear how just how involved to be in this offense. It might take him a little while to integrate, but I just think that you know, in, a, in an offense without Julian Edelman, they clearly need guys. and. Uh, you know, Dorsett could factor in. He's a very fast guy. He could be a deep threat kind of home run uh, target. So even if he doesn't contribute this week, I think he's a guy worth adding uh, down the road. He's only owned in 9% of leagues right now. So I think that's going to rise. Well, it should be interesting to see how he does in week yeah. one. Uh, the Patriots take on Kansas City on a Thursday night. So mm -hmm. an interesting one here at Gillette Stadium. And mybookie.ag has uh, the Patriots as 8.5 favorites so should be interesting to see what happens there uh, from wide receivers let's go to tight ends mm -hmm. yeah tight end uh, I, I like Evan Engram on the Giants he, he's a rookie but he actually got a lot of run in preseason he was kind of their every down tight end uh, you know, I just think that, uh, and they also have a, have a pretty good matchup in week one they're playing the Cowboys uh, Cowboys gave up uh, second most points to opposing tight ends in, in Yahoo Fantasy Leagues last year so uh, I think he has an option. I think he's probably your best streaming option at tight end this week. Uh, you know, tight ends are, if you didn't like who you drafted in, the, in your draft, then he's worth picking up. All right. Well, great stuff from Darren. As always, you can follow along with him on Twitter at Darren underscore Hartwell. And now we're going to send it to our good friend Ricky Doyle for some show and tell. The name of the game is show and tell, which is where I bring in objects each week and use them to give you a few developing thoughts I have on the NFL season. First object I'm bringing in this week, a couple things of pepper right in. That's because Jabril Peppers is going to score a touchdown this week, and the Cleveland Browns are going to upset the Pittsburgh Steelers. I know that sounds like it's crazy talk, but let's, let's break it down for you. The Steelers, 
at the end of the day, they're probably going to be one of the true threats to the New England Patriots in the AFC, and the Browns probably aren't going to go anywhere. But I think the Browns are going to be entertaining this year, and I think that they could definitely pull off an upset at home in Week 1, ride that offensive offseason momentum that they have, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, they got a rebuilt offensive line, rookie quarterback at Deshaun Kaiser, and like I said, Peppers has the potential to make an impact in a couple phases of the football game. So I like the big upset this week. Uh, now we're going to flip over to the NFC. I'm going to bring in this uh, 1995S digital camera. Uh, that's because I think we're going to get a pretty good snapshot of the NFC East on Sunday. We're going to have the, uh, the Cowboys taking on the Giants and the Eagles against the Redskins. And I like the Eagles and the Giants to be the two classes of that division this year. And I think we're going to see it right out of the gate in week one. I think you're going to see the Giants, four-point underdogs, pull off an upset against Dallas. And you're also going to see the Eagles, who are one-point favorites over the Redskins, Ride Carson Wentz in the Thunder and Lightning combo of Darren Sproles and LeGarrette Wood to a victory over Washington. Finally, I'm bringing in a pillow. Uh, and it's, I, because I don't want you to sleep on the Los Angeles Rams this season. Some of our promo videos, I spoke about how I like the Rams to go over five and a half wins this year. I like them to make a little noise. That NFC West is suddenly a little bit vulnerable. So the Rams, behind the second year jump, from Jared Goff, new head coach Sean McVay, worked wonders for Kirk Cousins as the offensive coordinator with the Washington Redskins. I think that offense takes a step forward, rebuilt offensive line, bounce back from Todd Gurley, good defense. Do not sleep on the LA Rams. I like them the over five and a half, even if they don't make the playoffs. Good season for the Rams. I can't get enough of Ricky Doyle and show and tell. Thanks so much for tuning in. That will do it for this episode of The Hurry Up presented by MyBookie.ag. I'm Courtney Cox and I'll see you next week. Keep it locked in right here at Nesson.com. We've got everything you need to know during this NFL season.